So one, I have a 15 foot long wall that I want to create a built-in bookcase section for. Two, I have all these wires to deal with because I want to incorporate a stereo, so speakers, receiver, they all need to go somewhere. Three, I want to start working on a counter for this whole unit. So that's what's gonna be in today's video. So now when I have the bookcase over the fireplace, more or less completed, it's time to start building the, the wall units. And there are going to be three units. The left part, the middle part, where, which is above the TV and has like a stereo integrated, and then the right side. So I'm building rather basic bottom units here using plywood and screws, nothing fancy. And later on I'm going to add dividers and shelving as well. I find these corner clamp thingies quite useful when putting together a box like this, just to make sure everything is square. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I put together something without them, and it turns out to be, you know, not quite perfect. <laughs> Now, this here is a little section to raise the cabinet off the floor. It's inset attached, so I can place the unit against the wall, and I don't have to worry about the base molding interfering in the room. I figured it's a good idea to do the right section last. So that way I, I know exactly once I have the, the, the left and the center part done, I can confirm my measurements and just make sure everything just is really seamless. So this is the center section. This is where what I'm standing right now is where the TV is gonna go. And then shelving above that. So it's pretty big and it's gonna have three dividers, like three sections first, like cubbies. Uh, that's gonna hold the uh, the receiver, a center speaker, and then you know all the little Roku and Wi-Fi and you know all those little things. And then I'm gonna have some doors and an open kind of cubby section as well. So one thing to take into account here is the wiring issue. So you have a lot of wires coming down here, TV, receivers, stereo, speakers. Um, so they all need to be funneled through. Um, so what I'm gonna do right now is to drill a bunch of holes and that way I can bring like power strips through and then I can drill holes going downwards uh, through all these pieces as well. So I get these clamped together so that they're all the same. Okay, so I did. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 holes for wire management. 2 inches in diameter. So when putting in the dividers and the shelving, I'm mostly using pocket screws. And whenever possible, I just screw it together from the other side. Um, again, making sure everything is square, because it's really easy to see if one of the dividers is a touch off. So for the upper bookshelves, I'm going to be using some beautiful cherry plywood for a backing, and that's where there is going to be lights. But on the bottom ones, I'm not going to have any lights, so I'm going to be using this uh, beadboard backing, uh, which is nice and light and easy to work with, and I've cut out a section here for the outlet. 
to make sure I put, I put it on right. <laughs> Assuming that your cut, like of the back panel, is square to begin with, this is also a good way to ensure that your unit is square, because this one was a little bit out of square, but once you put the backing on, you can kind of adjust it and, and just kind of squeeze everything in place and get a nice square. Plug fits perfectly in there, the outlet. Let me try to fish through the wires. Not you, Darwin. Okay, so this is the first section. Uh, this obviously is going to be replaced as well by the, uh, the other unit. I really like how this is kind of uh, not so deep. Then this next section is gonna be deeper. Uh, so it's gonna kind of be into the wall, outer, and in again. I think we're gonna start putting books in this right away. So I spent some time uh, last night getting this piece in and that piece in, then kind of fishing through all the wires through here. Um, sit down. Go to your bed. So now when I had the other two units in the room, I could take precise measurements of how long this last section needed to be because I wanted to end just where the wall ends so it's seamless. And this unit is the longest. Again, using the same design by propping it up a bit and creating a basic box. And I'll add dividers and a shelf later. I think I might paint before I put it on the top. Make life easier for myself. So this is going to be the uh, counter for the left section. So it's the short one and I'm going to have uh, two more. One's going to be deeper. That's going in the middle. So doing the final rip cut here to cut the piece to size and I'm just trying to be really careful to get a good cut and then I cut it to the final length with a circular saw. Okay, 
pins. And now this is going to be the front. So I need to sand and route. Route like a ranger on both the top and the bottom and one side. Because this one's going to butt up against the other section. So. Beautiful, huh? What do you think, darling? Okay, so I have the three sections in here now. Um, they're not finished, I still have molding to put on, doors, um, some more painting, that kind of thing. But now you can see the full span of them and what it looks like. So the, the tricky part here was really because this is such a long span, 15 feet is a long way. And I really wanted the, the stereo sections to come out a little bit, uh, to give it a little bit more dimension, plus I needed more space for the receiver and the center speaker. So I thought that would give me a good opportunity uh, to kind of create a little bit more dimension and a little bit more interest, as opposed to if I just had the same thickness all through, because I think that would look rather flat. And not to mention, <laughs> uh, by doing it this way, I really solved a pretty big problem. Because imagine if you had the one same height and depth all along, um, then you would have to make a counter that was 15 foot long. Um, and that is really tricky. I mean, there's gonna be areas where the wood meets if you were to do that, um, because you know it's hard to get 15 foot sections of wood. Um, so that is really, really tricky to create something so long. So by actually making this higher, I was able to kind of go around that because now I only have to make three counters instead. And the, the wonderful part about that is that they don't have to match up perfectly. Because this is going to be higher and this is going to be lower and inset more, you, it doesn't have to be just like, you know, all exactly the same and, and lining up just right. So in the middle section here I'm going to have a lot of these wires, which is why I want to put doors on to kind of block that a little bit. Um, and I also made this high like this so that I could fit a lot of like really tall like photo books and you know a few things like that that are just kind of large and cumbersome. And I think that's a really great point when you're making your own bookcases is that you can make you know specific shelves for specific books. So, you know, I have a, a series of dictionaries that I later on want to put on top there and I'm going to size the shelf so that it fits just perfectly. Uh, right now, this is kind of looks like a mess right here, but I am going to be cleaning everything up a bit. But right now I'm feeding wires under the rug because I put the base box underneath the Parsons coffee table that I built a couple of videos back. So that's not in the way here. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions about the build, anything that wasn't clear in the video. And otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye. There's quite a lot of steps to doing this kind of project, but at the same time, if you do one section at a time, it's not that bad. So now what I have left to do here is continuing working on the counters um, and then building the upper units here, which are also going to have lighting to match the, uh, the unit over the fireplace.